So Christy, I know that you've mentioned erotic hypnosis a couple times on the show and every time you've kind of just like dropped it like a like a like a crumb of something and then <laughs> left it. So I'm excited we're finally going to get to talk about this a little bit. Yeah, you you scooped me. I I went out and found a remarkable erotic hypnotist uh and Eve I'd, I'd love to hear how how you discovered this and how this became a part of the work that you do. Well, again, it was suggested to me by listeners who said, oh, I love your voice. I love what you're doing. Have you ever done erotic hypnosis? And of course, I had to go Google it because I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> but but uh, I thought, OK, yeah, I could do this. I could give it a try. And uh, so I found that that it had such a, a positive effect on a lot of people that I just and I enjoyed creating it. It takes a long time to create an erotic hypnosis audio. It takes usually a full day to pr to produce everything. But but uh, in the end, you get this very interesting, very layered, um, relaxing. You know, there's a lot of things going on. Some of them are almost an hour long. So you end up with a very interesting audio track that. Um, that I thought, yeah, I'd be very happy to in, to include this in with everything else that I do. Well, there are so many misconceptions and flawed beliefs around hypnosis. How do you, you know, cut through all that bullshit and just help people understand what it is that you're doing here or what you're offering? What I've started doing lately is at the beginning of every audio, I do a brief introduction where I say, this is um, an erotic hypnotic experience. And just so you know, this is what hypnosis is. It is deep relaxation. It is a pleasant experience. You are always in control. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. It's just a way for you to relax and to let your imagination and your creativity um, go wild, kind of. Um, but you, there's, it's not mind control. It's not, you're not in a trance. It, it, this is always something that you control. So just enjoy this experience and turn this off anytime you want. Wake up anytime you want. It's, it's just think of it as relaxation. In fact, on my site, I call it um, deep relaxation, erotic audio it's it's not meant to be hypnosis because that like you say it does scare people it has such a connotation of mind control and i have unfortunately had people write to me saying um the audio ended for me before you could do the wakener so am i still under your control things like that and and i just i i realized this person was really genuinely frightened so i had to kind of step this up more and explain more and go to more trouble to tell people what it was they were dealing with but I do find it interesting that some people write to me asking me to put suggestions into my hypnosis of things that they want. Men will say, can you do an erotic hypnosis that will make me want to suck a dick? I don't know. Can I say that? I'm not sure if I can say that. On the show yet. Please do. <laughs> um, and so to me, it's like, you know, I really wish I had the time to kind of speak with this person and say, there's a lot more going on here than just hypnosis. I mean, you really need to explore. You need to go inside and introspect a little. And obviously you have some curiosity, perhaps you're, you're bisexual or you're gay or something. And you're just using the fact that, that you want someone to hypnotize you into wanting this. And so I think there's, there's a real issue here. So I, I think it's really, um, important that anyone who does this makes it clear what this isn't as much as they make it clear what it is mm -hmm. because you wouldn't want to mislead people you really wouldn't want them to believe that there's you know some kind of power that you have over them that's the last thing you want you know oh my goodness i remember when i was 16 17 reading the book drood and i don't know if anyone knows that book if you do hello random person um but it was essentially a book about wilkie collins and charles dickens the two authors and how charles dickens hypnotized wilkie collins for the entirety of his life <laughs> and it's just wilkie collins like experiencing these really weird kind of acid trip like experiences in the underground tunnels of london with this like cult and it's all charles dickens his fault because he didn't wake him up <laughs> and me for like a year i was like oh my god this Imagine. really happens or like or like the movie office space i don't know if you've seen that yeah. but the, yeah. idea, the hypnotist has a heart attack and so that's what makes peter able to just you know be this kind of blase sort of you know walking around like he doesn't care for the whole oh, yeah. movie you know isn't so. that also the plot line of uh, utopia or one of those <laughs> utopian novels where he like goes to sleep because of a hyp hypnotist and then a gigantic like worldwide yeah. occurrence happens and he wakes yeah. up in the future yeah I so 
think I think it is theatrical. That's the thing. We get our ideas of it from theater, from watching X Files, where somebody puts you under for five seconds and suddenly you're you're regressing to a past life and things like that. You know, it's just it's crazy. And so when people hear it, they think of all these things. Plus stage hypnotism, which is totally different again. So, mm -hmm. well, and and it's easy to to make fun of and i think it's important for us to kind of lay out like yeah the, this is an actual thing we're not trying to pitch some sort of bizarre magic or the supernatural uh but it, it also makes sense why people can start to draw those conclusions because of the the depth of the relaxation and i mean i i think there are people watching tonight that might be shocked to recognize that there are hands-free orgasm experiences on your website and that it's possible to achieve orgasm without any kind of physical stimulation, utilizing focus and the power of the mind in these different ways, it, it can feel a little bit like magic. Do you get that sort of like incredulity uh, when you're when you're kind of presenting this as even a possibility? Oh, certainly. And and I I think that um, an important thing to say is is you never want to dampen someone's sort of um, mystical appreciation of the human mind because it, we are fantastic creatures there's no question you don't have to be spiritual or religious or anything to understand that the human mind is capable of extraordinary things and so i think just that general appreciation for what we can achieve with our with our minds when we set our minds to it we all know of stories not even necessarily sexual but we all know of stories of people achieving incredible things just bit on willpower or or, um, you know, the things that they're able to convince themselves that they can do. Um, people that can lift cars when the car falls on their kid and stuff like that. You know, like there's just there's things that we can do that our minds tell us to do. Um, and that's not a negative. That's not a um, it's not supernatural. It's not something that is to be feared or worried about. Uh, it's just it's just a, a, an ability that we have. And so I think what I try to do too is I often send out, there's a link that I have about um, hands-free orgasms where it kind of explains the physiology of it. So, uh, but the but in, in layman's terms, the way I explain it to most men is I say, in puberty, you probably had wet dreams. Most young men do. Not all, it's not, it's not abnormal if you didn't, but most boys who go through puberty um, have, um, you know, wet dreams. They have nocturnal emissions, as they call them, right? And that's the body preparing for sexual activity. And so you have the framework, you have the, the mechanism in place for you to have orgasms without any kind of contact. So you're just kind of tapping into that as a grown man. You're just kind of remembering that part of your physiology that is capable of doing that. So it's not mystical. It's not a magical thing. It's just, if anything, it's more like you're you're back to being a pimply teenager again. <laughs> Maybe that spoils the <laughs> For a sexy way of describing it. Very yeah, sexy, that really yeah. sells for fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that. But when I think when you ground it in reality like that, it gives people a much better appreciation for. Oh, so this is just a real thing. This is a thing that I can do, and it's kind of neat. But it's not. It's not like some crazy otherworldly thing I have to worry about. You know. Sure. Well, I know you said that uh, you you kind of went out and learned how to do this due to popular demand and, and everything else. Uh, how did you learn the hypnosis aspects uh, in particular? What did that research really look like? Well, I looked up hypnosis as a serious um, therapy that people used for all kinds of things, for coming overcoming trauma, overcoming phobias. And in fact, I, I tried it myself because I had a a very long standing fear of flying to the point that I couldn't fly. I just, I had a, tra a traumatic experience that was connected with a, uh, a flight and it just became connected in my mind and I had a terrible phobia and I couldn't fly. So I thought, well, I'm going to, in doing research, I'm going to try this on myself. I'm going to listen to um, hypnosis to help you get over the fear of flying. And it worked for me. I mean, I live in Ireland now. I mean, I got here on a plane, <laughs> right? So I didn't swim, you know? And so I, I realized that there is power in this. There is something that being deeply relaxed and getting positive suggestions really helps. Um, it really lets your mind explore something without kind of the barriers of maybe your regular fears or your, your preconceptions, things like that. So I just started researching it more as a real therapy and started reading about what real... Um, hypnotherapists would do, the scripts that they would use, the way that they would treat their clients, the way they would help them 
relax and the type the different types there were the different kinds of things and i just modified it for um for audio there's several that you do in person you know you can drop the hand and there's all kinds of things you can do in person but i just modified it for audio um, and made sure that the first section of my audios was was very much just completely what you would expect at a hypnotherapist and then the second part is something that would probably get my license revoked if i was a real <laughs> hypnotherapist so, sure. you know. but you know that's the thing everybody knows what they're getting into when they when they click play so <laughs> it's okay <laughs> what uh what advice do you maybe have for curious viewers on on how to get into erotic hypnosis or, or you know what to even be looking for well what I have heard from people is that the reason they don't like it or they tend to stay away from it is that so far it has been used by entertainers who tend to go the route of humiliation, um, domination, uh, degradation, things like that. That's a particular kink. And, and, but if it isn't your kink, you can see how that would be kind of frightening. If mm. you feel as though you're getting into this stage of where you're very susceptible to suggestions, and then this woman is telling you that you're worthless and you're whatever, whatever, you know, if that's not your kink, then this is something that could be pretty terrifying to someone. Um, so I would say that if you have any fear, certainly try someone like me or other people. I'm not the only one who does kind of uh, for lack of a better word, you know, positive, you know, erotic hypnosis, but look around and see what, what is being presented. What are you, um, I call it kind of ethical porn. I have a whole list of things on my website that I consider to be ethical porn. And one of those things is that the, it's very clear what you're getting when you consume this and there's no surprises. There's nothing in it that's going to disturb you or surprise you or mislead you. Um, and also, if if you're curious about hypnosis, do what I did. Try something relatively benign, for lack of a better word, first. Try something like see if you can if you can listen to hypnosis about something like um, something minor, like stop biting your nails or something, you know, and see how that works for you. See if you enjoy the experience. See if it's something that you you may not take to it. You may. You may lie there and go, what the hell is this? You know, but you you might love it. And so this way it would be a good sort of introduction into this kind of thing without you going the full kind of, okay, I'm going to put my sexuality on the line here. Because I think we all know, you know, the sexuality is, is such a deeply ingrained part of us and it can be fraught with emotions and sometimes past traumas and things. So you don't, you don't want to really mess with it. I understand people don't want to take the risk with it, but you can definitely introduce introduce yourself to it slowly if you have any concerns and also reach out to the performer most of us are easily contactable you can just dm us or whatever you know on twitter <laughs> however you want to reach us and just say look i'm curious about your your recent uh audio but i'm just concerned about this this and this can you can you help me and most of us are you know i talk to my fans all the time so i'd be happy to help someone if they if they're concerned about it if they can kind of meet me you know quote unquote meet me first then they might realize okay she's not going to implant some you know <laughs> mind control you know, that kind of thing you know no so, evil lab tech going no, on no exactly yeah. right so it's just a way to you know you can do lots of different things to to kind of ease yourself into it well, sure. Do you have any tips or tricks for people looking to achieve their first hands-free orgasm? Yes. Um, I think that the number one thing is that you really have to let go of expectations that it's that it has to happen for you because that's the number one thing is the tension that you feel in wondering, are you going to have it tonight kind of thing? It's the same thing that the, the advice they give to women who have a hard time reaching orgasm with their partners is you have to relax about it because the more tense you are thinking, I don't know if I'm going to have it tonight, you know, um, the less likely you are. So what I recommend to people is um, that they, they, they make sure that they're in a state where they're already very relaxed. Sometimes I even recommend set your alarm for three in the morning, you know, when you're when you've already been asleep so that you're almost asleep. You're in that phase where you, your brain is almost in those kind of alpha wavy states to begin with. Um, and you're really deeply relaxed and try then. Um, I also suggest that you um, consume some kind of uh, consume sounds wrong, but watch some kind of or listen to some kind of porn that you real that really turns you on. But don't go all the way with it. Just get yourself worked up, even if you just have to think of a favorite fantasy before this begins so that you're kind of priming the pump if you know what i mean that really sounds mm. bad but you know like, <laughs> you know like get yourself ready get yourself in that mood before you even begin so 
um, I wouldn't recommend alcohol that has that has some um, bad effects on the circulation and can affect your erections. But um, definitely just deep relaxation and and no expectations, knowing that you can always try this forever for as long as you have a dick, you can practice this. So so just chill out. You know, it's it's it 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 can probably happen for all men. I don't like to guarantee that it can. But there's certainly a lot of fun in just trying over and over again. So, so just keep getting there. Keep getting closer. See what it takes for you personally when you feel like you might have gotten close to it. Find out, well, what was it that kind of got me close that time? Was it something I said? Was it something you saw? Was it an image you put in your head? Was it some situation that made you more likely to, to have this experience? And then you can try to aim for that next time. You can try to be more aware of that condition next time. But just, you, you absolutely have to relax. That is definitely the number one thing. Just relax about it. Sure. And we're highlighting, you know, one kind of orgasm and one kind of experience here. But I think it's worth mentioning uh, that a hands-free orgasm is possible for people with a vulva, for people who identify as women and these other orientations or options. So if you're curious, I'd invite everybody to kind of get out there and, and see what they can find. Absolutely. Give it a try. What's the harm? I mean, just just it's fun. That's the thing. Trying is fun. Practicing is fun. So so just I think that's the thing too like have a sense of fun about it some people have written to me very concerned that they can't have one of these things and i just think you're on the wrong track already if you're concerned you shouldn't be concerned about your orgasm you know it's just something that you should you should be having fun with it and mm -hmm. until you can get in that mindset um it might be difficult for you but by all means just look for the look for the experience in whatever way you have it that's what sexuality is about and certainly self pleasure certainly if you're alone and 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 pleasuring yourself there's there's no expectations here there's nothing that you need to worry about this is self love time this is time for you to just connect with your own experience your own body your own likes and dislikes that's kind of thing just make sure that you're connecting with yourself and and uh, i think that's a it's as therapeutic as anything else is, you know, it's as good as a massage. It's as, you know, it's as good as anything else. And um, more people should be willing to do that. I think, I think mm -hmm. we'd be happier. <laughs> as good as anything else. I think that's a, a great way of explaining it. I I'm hoping V that when we wrap up the episode tonight with our, you know, regular encouragement for everybody to go out and give themselves a big old orgasm that, you know, at least a couple of people will be curious about trying that orgasm hands-free. Right. Isn't that usually like the next step in your, in, in, in your skill set? Like you do something and then you go, look, ma, no hands. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there you go. I like that. 